This is another message from the underground. The voice of free earth brought to you by Paul Seals, straight from the source. You are here now with a special purpose to fulfill. And you are not alone. This is it family, it's up to us. One planet, one spiritual source in a multitude of forms. Stay human, protect the planet, raise the consciousness. Hi guys, Paul Seals. I've got a very special guest with me today. Vinny Eastwood, also known as Mr. News, was born in the ominous year of 1984. The same year set out an Orwell's masterpiece and of the year New Zealand and the year of New Zealand's neoliberal economic reforms. And to quote him, it's on the points we agree that we should come together and collaborate. Those we disagree upon, we can argue about indefinitely. So let's leave those aside for another time, perhaps a time when we're no longer under the threat of enslavement and subsequent extermination by a bunch of ruthless, criminal, socio sociopathic scumbaggery. Vinny Eastwood, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Uh, so how, what can I do you for? What's up, ma'am? Well, it's interesting. Everyone's been saying to me, I, I, you've got to talk to Vinny Eastwood. This guy's the guy in New Zealand that knows what's going and what's happening. And I just wanted to check in with you really quick. How are you going, Vinny? Well, uh, something interesting that would happened in the uh, in the news today. You know, you've heard of uh, positive uh, tests and, and negative tests and things like that. Mm. Uh, today in New Zealand, we had a, a public announcement: breaking news: somebody's had a weak positive. You know, a weak uh, positive. What does that even mean? Well, I don't know, but it makes me positively feel negative. Um, and the, the 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 problem that we have here uh, is essentially a, a form of mass psychosis. All right. Not entirely dissimilar from the mass psychosis of uh, climate change or terrorism. Look, there's a terrorist over there. Look, that's the climate. It's over there. It's behind you. And, and, and uh, you know, and now it's uh, onto viruses and things of that nature. The things that these all, all these uh, have in common, just like racism and what have you, is that they're invisible. Mm -hmm. All right, and they could be anywhere. They could be behind you, and you don't know where they are. So therefore, be afraid. Be very, very afraid, and feel a hell of a lot of negative vibes. Because mm -hmm. if you don't feel all those negative vibes, you know you'll <laughs> you just won't accept all the programming. Yeah, that sounds reminds me of the famous quote from uh, Donald Rumsfeld back in the uh, the weapons of mass destruction narrative, along the lines of "I don't know where, I don't know when something really bad's going to happen." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where are those weapons of mass destruction? Well, we know where they are. They're in the north of Iraq and in the west yeah. of Iraq and the east west. You know, the <laughs> these guys, they just got no shame, you know, kind of like me. Um, and and the, the the thing about it is uh, we, when, we, when we're dealing with uh, 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 politicians and news and things of that nature, the propensity is uh, very, very uh, uh, likely uh, to end you into some kind of negative thinking. Now, that's how mass psychosis actually occurs. Too many people being exposed to too much negative information, too much that they develop a delusion, a yeah. delusion that they need to build their lives upon because as soon as that delusion crumples, they crumple, their, their uh, uh, position of themselves crumples, mm. all right? And the delusion will take one of two forms. Uh, number one, somebody to blame. It could be witches. It could be the Irish. Mm. I, I personally believe it is the Irish, but anyway, the the you know, <laughs> it, could, it could be any kind Everyone of scapegoat. Gets turn, Vinny. You know, it's the it's the yeah. <coughs> Islamists, the Chinese. Like, who's next? Sure. So any scapegoat, any scapegoat that you can think of, and the second way that mass psychosis works is a savior. Mm. All right, this person will save us. We need to give them all an unlimited power. To run our lives okay in both cases people have abdicated personal responsibility and have abdicated courage mm. okay courage in the face of certain death courage in the face of bodily harm courage in the face of getting a bit of pee on your leg you know it doesn't matter what kind of courage you've got 
as long as you actually are capable of displaying it in the face of negativity and uh, spreading positivity, spreading happiness, spreading joy and spreading peace is not an easy thing when the forces that oppose you are violence and fear and psychosis. Mm -hmm. And now uh, that violence, that fear, that psychosis is starting to uh, reach its, uh, I, I don't know, reach its highest point par excellence where uh, censorship is rampant everywhere i've uh, been banned off of twitter no yeah. explanation no no we banned you it's just i signed in one day oh suspend. okay okay and i heard that uh, you had your patreon channel closed down as well yeah the huge chunk of my monthly income uh, that i'm supporting my wife and my baby on uh just gone no no not being told about that uh either at all no chance to appeal or, or, or anything so the uh um, the, the noose is tightening around me and uh had my channels demonetized as well another huge chunk of income yeah you know basically one day it there'll be a law where it is illegal to make a living where you don't hurt somebody or damage their property hmm okay that's the living that i'm trying to make yeah all right and they're making it harder with each passing day and even right now in new zealand we're talking about the uh, harmful digital communications bill or something like that which is going to give them all sorts of different powers to send somebody to jail for hate speech somebody said something on a live stream mate that's hate speech you're going to jail for six to eight years mm. you know that's terrifying because mm. uh it's subjective okay uh yeah. somebody just has to claim that they've been offended all right and therefore it's hate speech now the problem is every time the prime minister comes on the television or is on a live stream yeah. anytime i see her face i get offended okay now you know if 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 it was one rule for all and she had to go to jail for six years, well, Jacinda, you you offended Vinnie Eastwood. You you went on a live stream and you smiled. That big fake smile of yours, that big PR shoving the frickin' lies down your throat with a with a with a goofy grin smile. Just just stop it. Okay, just go to jail, go directly to jail. Don't yeah. go past go. Don't, don't, don't collect $200. That, that would be a reality I might actually be okay with. But yeah. the problem is it's not going to be applied equally. Mm. If you are a ruthless criminal, sociopathic scumbaggery, a, 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 a satanic child sacrificing, a, 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 a blow snorting, a, a drug dealing, gun running, a, a, a money laundering scumbag, mm. right over here, sir, we've got a table for you. But if, you, if you're telling the truth, yeah, and you're being honest and you're interviewing the people who are the victims of the system, not to call them victims. They don't have a victim mentality. They've got a warrior mentality, but they yeah. are nonetheless victims of the system as many people who, who wound up speaking truth uh, to power actually are because they know who they're fighting for. They mm. know what they're fighting against. Okay. Mm. And so when we are looking at the uh, New Zealand situation, it's different to the rest of the world. I'm not sure if, 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 if uh, the American or, or British audience will, will actually really understand this, but I'll, I'll just try and, I'll just try and uh, see if I can get it. So basically you've got a, uh, a group of native peoples who got uh, uh, colonized and then they interbred with the people who colonized them and then wound up becoming in control uh, by some kind of big corporate dictatorship that has birth certificates for everybody and, and, and more or less loans you out uh, on the international stock market as live mm -hmm. stock where they can mm -hmm. secure all their government loans. And you have a private banking system that basically launders money from all around the world in order to keep your uh, economy propped up uh, with all of these uh, ill-gotten gains and meanwhile at the same time the population is going into public schools where they're not being taught to think about what is correct or incorrect or how to figure out fact from fiction nor are they being taught uh, with the many undermined religions about morally what is right and wrong and so you have essentially an entire population of man children and little princesses who are obsessed with dancing tv movies music and uh, uh celebrity quiz shows and and uh things of that nature as well as of course large quantities of sports for the men and 
they are not healthy people. They're uh, they're drinking fluoridated water. They're getting chemtrail. They've got the aluminium, barium, and strontium right into their uh, brain places like that. Uh, mm. They're vaccinated overwhelmingly. They are uh, using their cell phones too much. They're getting all the EMF and MR wireless radiation all over them. Uh, they're they're uh, dying of cancer left, right, and center. Uh, government health care doesn't work. In fact, it winds up killing people uh, uh, more often than uh, any other kind of cause of unknown natural death uh, in this country if you add up the statistics correctly and other than that the mainstream media and the government are in a constant state of bombarding the population with fear and mm. nonsense and paranoia so make sure that uh, any kind of uh, people who do stand up and many do uh, mm. wound up being uh, thought of as crazy people before they've even opened their mouth uh, thanks to the images portrayed of them by the media and the government so this might be hard for people in other countries to understand mm. you know but that's the situation that it is in new zealand mm. Wow. So I'm just wondering, uh, well, I want to dig a little bit more into the what's happening in, in New Zealand as well for the people that are listening, because we do have people all over the world. Um, but can we, I'm just wondering if we can take a step back for a minute and just get uh, some context around who Vinnie Eastwood is and how long you've been doing this for Vinnie. I mean, this is, uh, it, I find uh, people that do have the courage to speak out, particularly publicly, uh, not only the fact that I admire them, greatly but i'm intrigued about like what makes people tick was there like how long have you been doing this for now and what was the impetus what was the catalyst what was the uh what was the pivotal point for you in your life that had you sort of step up and and throw caution to the wind and fully put yourself on the front line to uh to say and speak your mind not only for yourself but for a lot of people in your country well, I didn't make a choice. I had a lack of options. Uh, so I got busted for, with uh, uh, selling weed. I think they caught me with uh, 13 grams of weed that I had for sale. And they were going to send me up to jail for uh, up to eight years with uh, no diversion for a first offence. Um, and so I lived with that reality for about a month. That gave me complex post-traumatic stress disorder, which I uh, suffer from today, which means mm. if at any time I don't feel actually in control of my life, I can start to have uh, uh, kind of panic attacks or whatever, unless it's a fight flight situation or, so, or something's breaking or whatever, then I can just be like the Terminator and just friggin' do it, you know? Yeah. Um, but most of the time it's, it's a, a constant state of anxiety. Um, and uh, with that, I went into uh, telesales after university. Uh, uh, I, I, I basically uh, dropped out of university because um, I could. I wanted to learn critical thinking, and they were just teaching people to be critical of those who could think. Mm. Uh, it didn't didn't work out too well for me, so I became a, a telemarketer, a very very good tele. In fact, I could I can easily say without equivocation the best telemarketer, and uh, not only in that in that company, but pro but probably uh, by a huge margin in many uh, different metrics. The way that I was able to uh, uh, make uh, such success in that particular field is because I was straight up honest with people. Mm. Okay, I can I can uh, develop a relationship with somebody in thirty seconds and get them to trust me, not because I was lying to them, but because I was honest. All right. And most people uh, respond to honesty. Occasionally you got paranoid, crazy people and things like that. And uh, they, they're, they're accusatory and insane. Mm -hmm. You just hang up and you call the next person. Mm -hmm. Average uh, call rate on the call on the floor was one in 17. So for every 17 phone calls you make, you make one. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, we make one sale. Mine was one in two. Wow. All right. And mm -hmm. that's probably because the first person didn't pick up the phone. You see what I'm saying? Now, the... <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, so, so I uh, I got traumatized in that job though because I got a uh, promotion. I wrote a seven page essay about what was wrong with the company. How could it? How could it improve? How could it do? Uh, uh, improve staff retention and so on and so forth. You know, a whole, whole big list of stuff. And they didn't uh, uh, discuss any of it, and they fired me. And then uh, so th that was uh, kind of how. Um, I'd been treated very poorly by the government sector and then very poorly treated by the corporate sector. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, I can't work for a company and I can't work for the government. That means I'm, I'm basically screwed, right? Um, and, 
been getting into a whole bunch of uh, Alex Jones at the time. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, how do you know if you're listening to too much Alex Jones? I used to listen to uh, Alex Jones uh, too much, far too much. How do you know if you're listening to too much Alex Jones? How do you know? Are you listening to Alex Jones? It's too much. All right. Now, the thing is, um, we had um, uh, uh, problems with that uh, kind of modality because that's uh, after I got fired and and uh, all of that, there were a couple of other jobs, but they were kind of inconsequential. Last one, um, I was about to quit my job and I had to call up uh, Jonathan Eisen, who does uh, Uncensored Magazine here in New Zealand, uncensored.co.nz. Mm. Uh, big plug to him and uh, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine, his uh, lovely wife, Kath. And um, I asked him, you know, should, should I feel like quitting my job, should I? And he goes, does it feel right? And I go, yeah, yeah, it does. And he goes, okay, then do it. Then. And so I go in a, and, I, and I quit my job and and uh, I went on a um, an artist benefit, which in New Zealand we call the doll. Um, and well, it was actually a mental health benefit, I, I think, or whatever. Oh, do you have depression? I, I, I don't know. Well, I feel pretty depressed because the world's run by ruthless criminal sociopaths and I can't work for the private or the government sector and can't get any money. So please give me money. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And so for a year, I got paid by the government to make videos criticizing the government, which I thought was uh, 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 fantastic. Uh, um, right. And then, and then, of course, uh, I, I needed to uh, make money in other areas. So that's why I started uh, basically doing uh, what is derogatory called e-begging. Ladies and gentlemen, please give me money. Go to theveneastwoodshow.com forward slash donate dot html and, and sign up through the PayPal, Patreon and Kiwi Bank to make an automatic payment so that I keep getting paid no matter if I work or not. All right. So that's basically it. All right. Those are the, uh, those are the catalysts. Got mm. badly traumatized got badly uh, uh, screwed over and then had no choice but to do the right thing and ask people for help voluntarily. Mm. Mm. And here I am 14 years later. Wow. That's incredible. And just, I wanted to, we, we had a great conversation a couple of weeks ago when we set up this appointment for this, for this podcast interview as well. And uh, I think fundamentally, how do you deal with, and I'm, um, and I'm having this conversation with you, but also for the listeners and the audience as well, how do you deal with this level of knowledge and exposure to this information without being impacted as far as your mental health is concerned? Like becoming overly depressed or cynical or, you know, et cetera. All right. I'll give you the answer. Hmm. You ready? Ready. That's a one word answer. Okay. Weed. All right. Now, seriously, if you, <laughs> if you've ever been upset about something, all of a sudden, you know, that was... I guess it's not as stressful as I thought, man. <laughs> Works for Willie. Well, the, the the fact of the matter is that cannabis has been used for uh, 10,000 years for basically anything. Whether we want, Whatever you want to build out of it, whatever you want to heal from it, uh, whatever you want to keep at bay with it, it pretty much does, kind of like a panacea. Um, and so, yeah, a little bit of uh, medicinal cannabis whenever I get too stressed, which is pretty much every hour. Um, so... <laughs> And that's how I deal with knowing all this stuff, all right, and seeing seeing everything everywhere you go. You know, even you know, I, I wish, I wish, and I'm and I'm glad that my wish was granted, that I can't see EMF waves. Right? Yeah. Do you have any um, idea how scary it would be? How many EMF waves that that w would be visible right now, just 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 coming at you from every freaking direction? Yeah. All right. And yeah. that's something I was just uh, thinking about this morning is. Uh, uh, Ole, Dr. Professor, sorry, uh, Ole Johansson in, in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And um, he was uh, uh, shocked to discover that because of the amount of uh, uh, Wi Fi and cell phones and stuff like that are everywhere, uh, there's a, a chance, not a certainty, but a mm -hmm. chance uh, that we might be uh, within the last uh, one to two generations of biological uh, reproduction for the human race. Yeah. All right. It's, it's, it's having that massive an effect mm. on our fertility that we're about to go ex like we're about to go extinct and mm. you're still on your phone all right and so am i <laughs> it's it's fast i've done an interview with uh professor ollie johansson as well and also some other people including um some of the top people in their fields including arthur Furstenberg, who wrote the book the invisible rainbow as well but you're right with what you're saying so electromagnetic frequencies electromagnetic radiation but the, 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 the aspect, that aspect of it as well, Vinny, but then there's also the, 
as you mentioned, the uh, the toxins, the fluoridated water, the genetically modified foods, um, the list of contaminants uh, goes on and on and on, and the the trajectory that we're going on, the amount of uh, and then that, that's without even considering and introducing the mass vaccination coercion agenda as well and what, what that has potentially to to create and concerns that people have around um, the damage of the DNA, the impact on the infertility and, um, you know, interrupting women's ability to create placentas, like all this sort of stuff that's sort of going on and on. So it's it's certain, it's it's a real concern. Right. Now, imagine for a moment if you could uh, make the entire world sterile and then imagine that you alone have the cure. OK, mm. you want to have your kids? You come through me. You want to come through me? You have to do what I say. Mm. All right? Me and my wife had to go to a fertility specialist and stuff. We only just had our baby uh, last year right in the middle of lockdown. That was a traumatic story. I'll tell you that mm. later. Mm. Um, but. Yeah, when we're trying to get all this fertility treatment, it's like, oh, you have to quit smoking, you have to lose X amount of weight or so on and so forth, otherwise we can't give it to you. Um, and I was just thinking the to myself, keepers. and I was just thinking to myself, you know, it's just all these uh, hoops that you have to run through just so that you can reproduce because, mm. excuse me, mm. society so uh, polluted with these spermicidal, fertility-destroying chemicals and fields mm. of uh, varying descriptions that the option of even having a child naturally is starting to become very, very uh, out of the reach of some people. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Not ideal. No, no. Well, congratulations on, on uh, having a child. And so uh, yeah, born into lockdown you might dig this if you're into numerology or the think that there's meaning and stuff. Uh, she, <laughs> so she's born uh, dead. Okay. It was a very, very uh, traumatic uh, birth for her. And then they resuscitated her, brought her back to life. Wow. That was on, that was on an Easter Sunday. Mm. Okay. Born dead, brought back to life on Easter Sunday. Then they put her back into the uh, incubator which is set at 33.3 degrees Celsius. Mm. And also she was born in the fourth month of the 20th year. So for those of you in the know, 420 is the international code for cannabis. So, oh, and not to mention the time she was born, 9.11 mm. p.m. Wow. So very, very special little bubba. And very, mm. very cute. So we've got lots of uh, uh, videos of her. She was making uh, little walkie noises. I was going, hey, little bubba. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> it's cute. It's a sausage. And yeah. um, it's fun having uh, uh, kids around because they are very sweet and they uh, they make uh, life uh, a little bit brighter, Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, without kids and if um, just uh, tutting away in video games and watching movies like I have for a, a good portion of my life, mm. uh, you realize that uh, if you counted up all those hours that you spent there, you've actually got nothing to show for it. Mm -hmm. But every minute, every hour uh, that you put into a child, you've got something to show for it. Yeah. 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 Wonderful, Vinny. So can we go back to having the conversation about like what's, what's the state of affairs in New Zealand at the moment? Oh, I think people are sort of interested in like what, what's occurring in New Zealand as far as the lockdowns are concerned, what's happening socioeconomically, uh, what's happening in relation to the, the vaccine coercion agenda. I'm just wondering if you can speak into that a little bit for us. I, technically, I can't, all right, because um, if I tell the truth about any of these things, there goes my YouTube channel, all right? They've made, the, YouTube has made it uh, against their rules mm. to say anything that contradicts the WHO or local health professionals. Mm. So I can tell you what our local health professionals are saying, but I can't disagree with them or put evidence of such or see or show you clips of them lying, right? Mm. You see, that's now yeah. against YouTube's policies. And New Zealand is just about to pass a bill that's going to make that New Zealand law. And you can go to jail for it as well. 
So mm. it's very, very terrifying situation in here right now. Now, the, the current Prime Minister is uh, Jacinda Ardern. She used to work for Tony Blair. She helped to cover up an investigation into Freemason child trafficking uh, throughout the, uh, the British police uh, some time ago. Mm. And uh, she also worked for the Better Business Bureau, which was adept at cutting red tape for large businesses and strangling small businesses with it right in the european union sector mm. she uh got a freemason scholarship uh to go to waikato university where she studied political science and public relations mm. okay and this before she got her gigs with uh, uh tony blair also known comes... as uh by edward bernays as propaganda yeah mm. um and uh tony blair is also known as tony blyer and uh the the other thing is, what was he, uh, she doing? Um, oh, yeah, her mentor was Helen Clark, who's uh, currently uh, secretary, well, well, nearly secretary general of the UN. I don't know if she's like number three or number four on the list or something like that. I haven't uh, updated her in about uh, eight years or whatever since I exposed it. Mm. Um, but her other mentor was uh, Tony Shearer, uh, also of the um, uh, United Nations. And... Uh, her other mentor was uh, Phil Goff, who's a member of a, a group called the Parliamentarians for Global Action, which is the Council of Foreign Relations equivalent of New Zealand. All right. Mm. So all of her mentors are top ranking globalist uh, 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 kingpins here uh, in New Zealand. OK, and are very, very influential around the world. So. After John Key, uh, our previous Prime Minister, a Federal Reserve banker who got the country into $100 billion in debt in a couple of years, mm. right, that he was Prime Minister. We used to have $8 billion in debt, bro. Wow. Got us into $100 billion. And that's not including the off-the-books derivative debt that he got us into, which mm. was over $112 billion at the time it was reported in 2011. It's been growing since then, and nobody's been reporting on it. Right. So this the, this country got sold out really bad. And that was where the bulk of my work was done in my career during the uh, uh, the term of John Key. So everybody thought I was a lefty because I was criticizing the right wing government. And then during the during the period of John Key's uh, rulership, I wasn't necessarily afraid. Mm. But when Jacinda got in, that was the first time that as a journalist, I experienced fear. And my fears were well founded. We had a 2019 attack. They took the guns. They censored the internet massively. I got demonetized. All my, my uh, career went down the tube, got my channel taken down, restricted, and so on and so forth for reporting the truth about those things. Mm. And uh, that was the first time I experienced fear just because somebody got elected. But yeah. then she got reelected with a landslide. And uh, I've got to tell you, bro, I'm not afraid anymore. Mm. I'm freaking so, terrified. <laughs> <laughs> and well, my terrors have so it, far, and my terrors have so far been well founded as well. Mm. Um, and and I, I just have, I don't know. I think it's, since I grew my hair out or something like that, I've been a little bit more se sensitive to the, uh, uh, the the wiles and the fabric of the universe, or so, or something like that. Where I can almost feel like bad stuff's coming. Uh, like every single time, there's some kind of uh, case of a virus uh, reported. Oh, we had somebody in managed isolated quarantine who's got the virus. I go, really? You've, isn't that where they're where they're supposed to be, bro? Like, <laughs> am, am, am I missing something here? Um, and and this morning. And I was just talking to my chiropractor about uh, they've got a um, I'm, I'm not sure what it, exactly the term was. It was a low positive or a weak positive. A weak positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Which, which makes me feel strongly negative, uh, 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 frankly. Uh, and, and because every single time these uh, uh, alerts and freaks out and breaking news and there's new a community cluster, mm. some bubble's been violated. We're going to live in a bubble now, apparently. That's yeah, it's very it's, similar. It's, I've done a few interviews with with a couple of people, and I and it, it feels very similar. I, I I was in the Middle East when the soon after the nine eleven thing happened, and um, the interesting thing is the whole it almost the, it, there's patterns there if you can if you can observe them if you can sit back and watch there's patterns of behaviour there's patterns of languaging and there's patterns of of, of what's occurring, but. It's almost exactly the same narrative, the same style of patterning that's being used with the whole weapons of mass destruction narrative that occurred. And um, 
Yeah. Well, I, I, I use this analogy. Remo remove weapons of mass destruction and insert um, coronavirus and the perceived threat. I don't know whether you were back, remember back um, post that, but the threats, the th they had a threat meter which sort of went from, yeah, sorry, yeah, from yeah. green to red and yeah, it's just orange, like it's fruity terrify today. people on a daily basis. Yeah. And a, a very, very similar to what we're experiencing now, about 20 years later, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. then what happened 10 years before uh, before what we're experiencing right now? Huge financial crash, right? Mm -hmm. What happened about 10 years before 9-11 uh, uh, happened? Oh, it was the, uh, the early 90s financial crash when uh, New Zealand lost 100,000 jobs or whatever. Who was the person who crashed that economy? Oh, it was the the soon to be prime minister john key he sold he sold a huge amount of uh, new zealand dollars when they floated the currency mm. uh, at the behest of a man named andrew krieger who's known as the number one corrupt capitalist of all time all right mm. collapsed the economy cost a hundred thousand new zealanders their jobs later on nearly 20 years later becomes a, a prime minister right so what if I, I was just thinking this what if there's a uh, a pattern in a game Okay, so every 10 years or something like that, something terrible will happen. This 10 years, it'll be some kind of manufactured crisis. The next 10 year, it'll be, it'll probably be some kind of uh, uh, financial crisis, right? Mm -hmm. And so as you go through, you get people afraid. The stock market goes up. Then when people work real hard and they get all their loans out while they're afraid, you then restrict the uh, um, economy and you suck up all that cash. Right, and you get all their real businesses. You get all their all their uh, all their work, all their labour on a on a decade by decade basis by pumping and dumping it. Yeah, so that's beautiful. That works, and you have to do it every uh, ten to twenty years or so, because if you don't uh, leave it that long, people will remember. Mm. Okay, people will remember what happened last time. All right, do you know that there are children today, right now, that are of voting age, that have never known a world outside of terrorism post 9 11 surveil everything yeah all right mm. so generation by generation we've been given these exact same lessons and it takes about 20 years to get all those lessons there and then you've got a fully brainwashed individual who basically rem uh, do anything and everything the government wants mm. by and large mm. unless they see examples of other people to follow people who uh, have real authority who have actual truth mm. and of course we don't broadcast we don't broadcast those people let's keep them off the airwaves and if they are make it 30 seconds so that they don't understand the context and if it's longer than 30 seconds make sure it's a hit piece on them so people think that they're lying before they open their mouth mm. and uh, as a result here we are now modern situation uh, in new zealand and, and, and around the world yeah. where you have people who know what's going on but nobody can hear them nobody can see them and it's not because they're not trying to make themselves visible it's because people are trying to cover them up yeah yeah it's interesting uh like i do observe the news sometimes because i wanted to to, to see what they're projecting into the what they're seeding into the consciousness there but um, there is nothing, there is zero zip about anyone questioning anything in relation to the uh, vaccine coercion agenda that, that gets any airtime whatsoever. Oh, yeah. Well, guess who funds the media? All right. Who's, who's the biggest advertiser uh, uh, on the media in, in New Zealand and America? It's the pharmaceutical companies. Mm. All right. So if they start doing stories and things like that, going, oh, these people are bad. They killed 1,500 people here and 2,500 people there. And blah, 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 blah. These, va these vaccines are poisonous. <laughs> Guess what's going to happen to all your millions of dollars that are actually propping up your entire industry, buddy? Yeah. You're going to be popped and, and, and taken out like that. Your company's going to be sold out from under you. A new CEO is going to be brought in. They'll buy out the company for a dollar or something like that. And then they'll just keep pumping out the propaganda. Okay. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's, that's it. Uh, they've got this thing uh, uh, stitched up in many, many ways. But the difference is it's a, uh, it's a big long plan. Mm. Okay. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, there's an old saying about the best laid plans of mice and Amen. men mm -hmm. okay and when you have something uh done meticulously it's meticulously planned out anything can go wrong you know when you're mm. in filmmaking 
uh, or activism or, or anything for that matter that you're trying to do professionally at yeah. any time, anything can go wrong and you need to be there on point and be able to stop it. And mm. so this is where we are right now is uh, the tortoise and the hare. Okay. Mm. The tortoise is uh, basically Fabian socialism. All right. The tortoise and the hammer is their symbol. Their other symbol is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. All right. And mm. the tortoise and the hammer idea is that we move very, very slowly and then we strike hard. Right. Mm. Mm. And so the tortoise and the hare, humanity, free humanity is the hare. We thought we'd win this race really easily because we're fast as a tortoise. Mm. So we, uh, we got bored. We stopped paying attention, forgot about the race and sat down under a tree to take a nap for a while. And a long while passed. And by mm. the time we woke up, that tortoise is near the finish line and we're about to lose and lose everything and lose forever. Mm. It's only now that we must use all the speed that we didn't even know we had. We're already fast, but we need to be faster than we've ever been mm -hmm. to get up from our slumber, get out from under the shade and comfort of the tree that we were resting beneath and move, move as fast as we can to get to that finish line first mm. and probably kick the tortoise in the face just before he gets in there and, you know, grab his... <laughs> grab his stumpy back legs and get him to squirm back. Hopefully he doesn't get you the hammer, you know. Um, but <laughs> you see, mate, well, yeah. have I taken the analogy too far? I'm pretty anal about my analogies. It, oh, You've could have, you could have gone more fraud Freudian. There was other lines to go there, and I'm glad you didn't, Vinny. But uh, the interesting thing as well, I don't know what's probably I'm not classy too, like that. <laughs> not too dissimilar in New Zealand, but uh, in Australia, both the, uh, the, 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 um, the, the big pharma companies are, are major donators and to to both the two main political parties in Australia. And people are in working on sort of exposing the depth of that at the moment as well. But uh, yeah, completely, uh, you know, no, no open conversation debate on uh, length of time for testing for, uh, for, for, for trials for vaccines when the average time previously has, previously has been seven to 10 years, mm. you know, zero liability on, uh, any uh, side effects or vaccine damage or death, et cetera. Uh, yeah. the, the, the lack of critical thinking in relation to this uh, is, is just really, has really dumbfounded me. Well, that's how they can uh, get the same scam uh, uh, pulled off time after time. All right? I mean, if you know anything about scamming, the mm. basic principle is if you scam somebody and it works, keep scamming them. <laughs> All right, use the exact same methodology. Hmm. But if you scam someone and then that you get found out or the scam gets identified or gets given a name, you take the scam underground hmm. and you wait and then you bring it back hmm. with a different name and a different appearance, but it's the same freaking scam. Hmm. Okay. And that's yeah. basically what's happening here. People have become unaware to scam. It's like if I was, um, actually attractive and you know really worked out and 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 and, and had like uh, plenty of money and fancy clothes and a nice car and and, and, a, and a great career and i was famous and i was on on beaches with board shorts and stuff like that bro mm. you know and and i could just develop these uh these pickup lines or these moves or this this game as it were and get three women a day four women a day or, or or something like that however i wanted using the same tricks over and over and over and over again mm. nothing is teaching people about the kind of wooing of the population and how it actually gets accomplished some men can do this because they've got the resources they know how to how to play it okay mm. Mm. I can't, and even if I could, I wouldn't, all right? Mm. Because I know that it's wrong to do yeah. that kind of thing. But there are other people who can do this kind of thing to humanity as a whole. They can come up to us and tell us these smooth lines. Mm. 
that they've developed in think tanks and little groups and things and uh, get us to go with them and go, oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna take you home to me tonight. And, and then all, all of a sudden, before you know it, whammo, you've got syphilis of the government, all right? Now, the... the <laughs> I, I don't know where that came from. Yeah. And neither will you, and that's the point, all right? You see? <laughs> you won't know where it came from until after you've got it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, all of a sudden, whoa, 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 what's going on here? And 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 by then it's just too late. All right. Yeah. There is there is not enough penicillin in the world to get you out of a government infection. Mm -hmm. So talking about that, uh let's 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 cap on let's touch on uh, what's happening as far as the solutions and what people are doing as far as taking actions and, and wanted to touch on you and, and uh, touch on this and, and find out like what's happening in relation to sometimes uh i think last year pre-election uh billy tk in new zealand was getting some some attention Incidentally, this morning i get a message from billy tk mm. and um i was just thinking about this the other day it was uh watching gandhi the movie yeah. and uh, i'm seeing so many similarities not only in gandhi and myself and billy and and, and all of this stuff but of all of us all of us freedom fighters we all have the same freaking mentality Basically, I will do what I'm going to do because I'm not hurting anybody and uh, you can't stop me and you can you can hurt me. I won't try and hurt you back, but uh, you're not going to stop me. OK, you know, that's that's basically the mentality of all of us freedom fighters uh, uh, to a T. And uh, what's different or perhaps unique, maybe I'm not sure. In New Zealand, we've got a thing called the Declaration of uh, Independence. They've got one in the States and, and, and what have you, but ours is a little bit different here. In uh, Māori, it's called He Whakaputanga, you know, and uh, <laughs> uh, basically it's uh, the Declaration of Independence for New Zealand. Now, yeah. back in the day, uh, there was this dude named King George, all right, and he was a very, very progressive king, you know, he, he, he likes to... Um, he likes to be friendly to the savages and what have you. Uh, and, and this is at the time, was a radical idea of giving Māori and their chiefs an actual independent country. Mm -hmm. Okay, the United Tribes flag. This is uh, New Zealand's original and first uh, trading flags. Uh, all sorts of uh, ships were carrying all around the world, uh, identifying that as New Zealand for about five years anyway. Mm. And then the British came in. Uh, not the British per se, not the crown, but a corporation which had overtaken the crown. They yeah. took down our flag and raised a fake one, yeah. making us think that that was, that was our flag. Wait, hold on a second. Well, how come it's got blue around the edge? It's supposed to have black around the edge. No, no, it's the same flag, bro. It's the same flag. All right. And you'd be like, okay, uh, all right. And then they lower that one and then raise the Union Jack. Now, why is this all important? It's because it actually changes jurisdiction. Okay, mm -hmm. if you don't have power behind your laws, you don't got no power. And the thing that gives you power behind your laws is your jurisdiction. Okay, mm -hmm. now in New Zealand, the real jurisdiction is Hefakaputanga, but the false jurisdiction that we're currently under is uh, called the Queen and Right of New Zealand Corporation, uh, listed at the SEC, uh, password 8888. If you want to mm -hmm. go and uh, uh, check that out for yourself. Uh, go to the Securities and Exchange Commission and type in the Queen and uh, Right of New Zealand, and you can actually see that New Zealand is, in fact, a corporation. Mm. Okay? As, Not, as is the Commonwealth uh, of Australia. Right. Mm. Now, this is where it starts to get interesting, because the original jurisdiction, hailed by our original flag, is actually still there. It never actually officially got scrammed. Mm. It was just a fraud. Mm. Now, for the first time, the Paramount Chiefs and the Rangatira and, and, and all of these elders and things like that and Billy TK have come together to actually finalize the official scrapping of the fraud government. Mm. Okay. And that might be uh, getting announced in the next few days, uh, potentially the, uh, the most historic occasion uh, that New Zealand might ever be involved in. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. um, apart from the the uh, the March sixteenth uh, mosque shooting, like nothing's ever going to get that much media coverage out of New Zealand ever again. Everybody around the world knows about that. That's our claim mm -hmm. to fame now. It's kind of like everybody knows New York because of nine eleven. Yeah. Well, you raised it, and I think we should touch on it because it is relevant in relation to New Zealand and the narrative. Uh, what's what's been the impact and the outcome 
uh, as far as that particular event. And he, I mean, a good friend of mine, Max Egan, has spoken into that previously as well. Um, what's what's the what's the breakdown in hindsight as far as the impact and the narrative as far as the the mosque, uh, the New Zealand mosque incident? Hmm. Well, let me see. The background of it is a little bit complex. It's not complicated. It's just complex. Mm. Okay. So Brenton Terrence, an Australian citizen, not a New Zealander. He came over here and uh, started buying weapons, started ranting around. He got called, he got the police called on him who did nothing. Mm. Yeah, nobody even knows how he got his, um, how he got his firearms license because you're supposed to have two people who live in New Zealand or whatever. And the two people that he gave the police were from 8chan and 4chan before he came to New Zealand, he claims he got money from BitConnect, and the people who claimed that was ABC News, uh, who linked to uh, The Guardian or something like that, who didn't have uh, any link to substantiate their claim either. Right? He's so probably one of the very few people that, that got any money from the Ponzi scheme called BitConnect. Well, actually acting under the assumption that he ever got it, because nobody's actually ever confirmed where his money come from except for his word and his word is in his manifesto which is illegal to view and you'll get uh, put in jail for 10 years for trying to read it wow. his manifesto that was remarkably pro-chinese communist party not pro-communist not pro-chinese but pro-chinese communist party mm. okay and then the media brands him a uh, a white supremacist all right and says oh whitey's with guns We've got to take we've got to take away all the guns within minutes. Within minutes of this of this uh, thing hitting the hitting the newsreel, Jacinda Ardern comes out going, "Our gun laws will change." All mm. right, I saw somebody in armed defenders uniform uh, 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 go into the mosque and start opening fire. Armed defenders uniform? What are you talking about? Well, there happened to be an armed defenders squad drill on the day concerning a shooting of a mosque. Uh, mm. Just 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 by coincidence. And there was also a, uh, a NATO sniper drill on the day uh, who were given shoot to kill orders, but just by coincidence. And the day before the uh, the shooting happened, uh, some guy, uh, an electrician who nobody can find the identity of, uh, came in and uh, took the electronic uh, security lock off of the uh, back door of the mosque so that the back door of the mosque where people could escape to wouldn't open. Mm. And... Of course, after the shooting, uh, nobody was allowed in the mosque apart from a bunch of uh, contractors and things like that who had no markings and had no vehicles with any uh, sign writing or anything like that. And nobody could tell out who, who they were either until uh, all of the mosque was cleaned up with new carpet, new walls and new everything. Mm. And then the public were allowed in. Mm. And um, the gunman himself gets apprehended on the day pleads not guilty, flashes a Masonic 666 hand sign uh, to the papers there. Mm. Uh, and on the first day of the lockdown uh, in 2020, near on a year after the uh, shooting, he pleads guilty and, uh, and, and and he goes down. So so it's on the first day of the lockdown when no media are actually allowed to peer or ask questions or anything like that. And then he goes directly into uh, solitary confinement after the arrest in 2019, of course, as well. And he's not allowed to talk to any media or have any visitors or, or anything like that, uh, which is actually human rights abuse, uh, being solitary confinement uh, uh, just in general, let, mm -hmm. let alone for a long period of time. Um, and he's going to uh, be there for... A long time maybe 16 years or something like that but we don't know uh because the investigation that the government launched into uh the attack uh they made secret uh from the public and then uh well they made sections of it secret and then they sealed the entire uh royal commission of inquiry into it uh for 30 years yeah. okay now uh just days before uh the incident happened Facebook went round, went down worldwide for forty eight hours. I remember that, right? Mm -hmm. And then day one, when it comes when it comes back, nobody's talking about anything else but this off of their uh, off of their Facebook. Uh, uh, I don't know what is it when you're trying to give up drugs or stringing out jonesing. You know, their their Facebook international jonesing was happening, yeah. and then ah, here's some flesh for you. You know, it's freaking creepy. Right. And now Max uh, did the job that I wanted to do, but I couldn't do it because I didn't want to go to jail. All yeah. right. Yeah. In New Zealand, to watch the video, 
make any kind of analysis of it or even try and share the video. Uh, mm. Got you visited uh, from the police. And in one case, uh, one guy uh, uh, shared a video and uh, the police came to his uh, house armed and pointed guns at his children's heads. Mm. Okay. Uh, I was visited uh, by the police six times. I was censored in the middle of the live stream the day after the attack. They had these algorithms all ready to go. Mm. Okay. Internet censorship started uh, taken off like nobody's business. Gun laws uh, got implemented 14 days after the attack. This was just a blitzkrieg yeah. on the, on the uh, population of New Zealand. Shock, fear, awe. Oh, my goodness. Where did this guy go on holiday for before he came to New Zealand? Well, he went to Israel. <gasps> really? How long did he stay out of his 90-day visa? Like, well, like nine days or something like that. Well, where did he go to the rest of the time? Well, we don't know. <laughs> the Israeli embassy won't tell us. But what about the New Zealand and the Australian embassies that are, that are there? They won't tell us either. But what about the police who made the inquiries? They won't issue any statements either. So, so like I'm saying... Um, uh, just, just with all of the uh, the general field of this, mm. there is nothing to be suspicious about, bro. Like seriously, just, just, just accept the government narrative, okay? That mm. single, single white male, okay, biggest threat that you've ever that you've ever thought of in your life. Anybody who's armed, huge, huge threat, unless they're wearing a huge uh, 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 uniform or something like that, and follow government orders without question. Those are the only people who aren't dangerous to have, to give weapons to. All right, and and, and just shut up. Just shut up, everybody. Shh. Just shh. Okay. Stop with your questioning. Stop. All right. <laughs> it's very interesting. You've got some echoes there in relation to the, um, you know, the Australia's own version of the Port Arthur massacre. With Martin the, Bryant, Martin Bryant, Brenton Tarrant. Yes, with yes. having no, uh, no trial whatsoever. No trial, like being incarcerated without trial. So mm, that's fascinating. And it wasn't it interesting as well. It, it had happened in Port Arthur, Tasmania, right? Correct. Right, and um, I think it was a very small town, uh, Port Arthur, and I think a couple of days or maybe a week or before it or something like that, um, a morgue truck, very mm -hmm. first morgue truck in that part of the world, was ordered mm -hmm. uh, that could that could take up to sixteen bodies or, or uh, something. Twenty two, like I think it was. Twenty two, was it? Yeah. Yeah. All right, and they just incidentally ordered this morgue truck just in time. Like, oh, thank God we've got this one, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it, it's so blatant. But the thing is, you have to look into it. And you have to look into it specifically with open eyes. Hmm. Because this will hurt your feelings. It will hurt you in your brain places. It'll make you feel all sorts of anxiety. Oh, my God, the government will kill its own people and blame people who didn't do it just so that they can destroy the lives of all the other people who weren't even involved, like you. Yes, yes, it happens, okay? Mm. Grow up, mm. just deal with it, like an adult, by drinking and smoking and swearing and joking, all right? So this is very interesting as well, Vinny, and uh, it's been great speaking with you, and we've probably got about another 10 minutes left, but I just wanted to, like, what do you say to people that, that, would, that would imply or be in judgment and say to you, Vinnie Eastwood, you have trust issues. You mean other than just suck my duck? Um, let me answer this. I have trust issues. Um, first of all, I'd like to inquire what a trust issue is. If right. it's I've been screwed over and lied to by psychopaths and that's taught me to not be a freaking idiot and trust anybody in all of the crap that they say, if that's called trust issues, I've got a couple of them, actually. If it's called, I don't, uh, I just sit there and I do what authority tells me to, which is a logical fallacy, mm. mind you. Uh, if you think that's trust issues, then I think you've got, uh, well, logical fallacy issues, essentially. It means that you're, you're uh, to think that I have trust issues is essentially to believe that your own world is a delusion. Mm. Okay. Mm. And it's not too far from the truth, is it? Okay. If I've got trust issues, your world is a delusion. I'm saying to you that, yes, I do have trust issues. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. 
So it's uh, it, and I, I I'm amazed and I'm I'm very impressed by your um you know by by your disposition and that um that you're so you know you're so jovial about the whole concept and some of the information can become a little bit debilitating at times because it's like it's it, it can be it it can have a sense of overwhelm and I think that's the thing that's this is the reason why I do what I do as well. It's a contribution to community. It doesn't make any money. It's like just getting information out there to people, wanting them to be connected, not wanting them to have them feel alone, uh, and just concerned about the the mental health issues and the impact of what's, you know, the government's fundamentally not promoting anything in relation to stimulating, encouraging people to 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 get their immune systems moving naturally, to eating well, to exercising, to getting sunlight, Um yeah, none of those things get any airtime whatsoever, and um, that's that's part of the reason why I do what I do. And um, so I just wanted to like dig in a little bit into like what it is for the why, and then what it is that you that you're getting out there to the world in relation to solutions for people, because most of us now have been doing this for a long time. You've been doing it for fourteen years. We know what the issues are. All the rest of it is just a reoccurring and regurgitation of. The names and the faces change a little bit, but like, what is it that you're in the conversation for, to to create for the world, or like, what else is possible, or like, what's what's some of the solutions, etc., that that people are wanting to get involved in moving forward? All right. Well, if you're listening to this, you are the solution. Hmm. You're a fifth dimensional entity. Okay. First dimension's a dot. Second dimension's a line. Third dimension's a box, and the fourth dimension is that box moving through time. The hmm. fifth dimension is that box, but it's beyond time it's beyond space and that's where all your ideas are right now you've been putting off something for a long long time that you thought was a really good idea that might actually help the world or improve yourself or help your family or something like that but you haven't been doing it have you and instead what you've been doing is you've been watching other people who are taking those ideas who are spending their time on it and willing those ideas into the physical universe for the rest of us to enjoy and you resent those people, don't you? Because you're not doing it. You're not fulfilling your own artistic obligations. It doesn't matter whether your art is science. It doesn't matter whether your art is music or mathematics hmm. or pornography. If you're making good stuff, bro, all right? If hmm. you're making good stuff and it didn't exist before it, you, it came to your head, and if it wouldn't, will itself into reality without you working on it mm. okay then it wouldn't exist without you okay so when people are listening to the show i hope that every show maybe one person maybe one mm. will have heard enough of the traumatizing stories will have heard enough of the inspiring words will have heard enough of the incontrovertible information to make that decision to themselves I'm not going to sit back and stop and, and not create things and watch things that other people create. I am going to turn off the Vinnie Eastwood show, turn off bad news with Vinnie Eastwood and just start doing what I'm supposed to be doing. The reason why I am here, a reason that nobody else gave me a reason that I gave myself a cause that I am fighting for because I know it is right, and nobody will stop me. That is the point of the show, to stop listening to the show and to start contributing directly yourself without anybody's help to humanity, okay? Mm. If you don't do it, every bit of uh, music that you've ever listened to may have inspired some musician. Every bit of art that you saw may have inspired some painter, every movie, a filmmaker. You see, mm. if you don't, create and bring things into the material world so other people can see them without you just talking about them you are depriving them of the ability to be inspired okay mm -hmm. and the lack of inspiration the lack of real inspiration the stuff that comes from deep within that gives you so much power and strength it's waning isn't it nowadays you see this lack of creativity this lack of real spunk that artists perhaps used to display more effectively than we do today turn off the show be yourself do what you're here to do because there's nobody left to do it 
but you. Mm. Wonderful, Vinny. And on that note, uh, I've certainly been inspired. It's been uh, amazing to uh, spend some time with you and uh, the hour has gone super quick. Uh, and the second most important thing uh, for the show is, of course, uh, give me money. Go to the vinnieeastwoodshow.com forward slash donate uh, dot html and uh, give me money today. All right. So that's that's the two reasons why I do what I do uh, mm. uh, to inspire people to not uh, uh, pay attention to me anymore and to give me money. All right. So that's basically it. Absolutely beautiful. So be inspired and please support Vinnie Eastwood. Vinnie Eastwood, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for what you do. I acknowledge you for your contribution not just for your country, but also for the world. So thank you for what you do and what you bring forward in your gift. Cheers, bro. Um, I was trying to, what was, what was it, the old phrase? Doing what I can with what I got. <laughs> Wonderful. Much love. Vinny Eastwood, thank you for listening. Thanks, bro. Cheers. Thank you for listening to another message from the underground. Want to know more? Head over to Facebook and search for our private Facebook group, Messages from the Underground, or visit www.messagesfromtheunderground.org. To connect with Paul Seals, please visit paulseals.com. Stay human, protect the planet, raise the consciousness.